Welcome to Formatting Rules, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity, and specifically the Velocity console. Each time you would like to move to the next slide, click anywhere on the slide to continue, or click on the forward arrow shown here. The Formatting Rules module will talk about Velocity's modern predictive formatting algorithm. The algorithm uses element types and allows for the element types to be predefined globally or locally. Last, we will discuss key text and how it tells the Velocity client how to redisplay the screen. The latest mobile computers include amazing displays with multi-touch capability. Velocity leverages the best of the bright touchscreen interfaces by taking the text-based information from your host and converting it automatically to an intuitive, easy-to-navigate mobile application. The Velocity client utilizes a built-in HTML and CSS rendering engine to interpret the design of your green screen captures, rather than requiring a complete redesign of your emulation server. By default, it interprets your existing screens with a predictive formatting algorithm that interprets the layout of each screen and the presentation of individual elements. When using the Velocity Client, you can rely on the default styles applied to each screen for immediate use on your mobile device, or if you want to edit element styles for individual screens, or all of them, you must first import the screens associated with the project into the Velocity console. Once imported, you can then begin to edit the screen elements. The Velocity console is used to configure screens that override the default predictive formatting. You can use the predictive formatting algorithm when it works and use the Velocity console to make changes when minor tweaks to the screens will improve productivity. As part of predictive formatting, the Velocity Client is able to interpret your existing screens to break down existing text elements and divide them into predetermined lists of elements. We will discuss these elements later in the module. The rendering engine that applies a series of predefined styles to each element to create a reformatted screen. These styles will also be discussed later in the module. Each screen consists of multiple elements. Each of these are editable through the Velocity Console, which offers multiple configuration options to create unique or branded styling that is applied via the app's built-in HTML and CSS rendering engine. Elements on the screen can be edited on a per-screen basis, meaning that the changes you make to a single screen element won't be applied to all elements of a similar type or through the use of themes you can create formatting styles for each element type that is applied across all screens. The banner element when configured activates a banner that appears across the top of the screen. It can consist of an image, a title, or both. Configuration of a banner element follows all the general predefined styles that will be discussed later in the module as well as some unique settings that will be discussed in detail in the configure screen and the project settings module. As will all the following elements we will discuss in this module. Think of a header element as a title of the screen that is being displayed. This is the way the user is able to determine just what the screen is looking for. The data label element is a dynamic subheader text that is used to label fields. This element allows you to change the label for the Velocity HTML rendered screen, but will not alter the black and green version of this label. The data type is a static subheader text that is used to label fields. This text value cannot be altered. The field element defines one or more input fields on the screen. The Velocity Client can take input from the keyboard, scanner, or other defined input methods. The Menu element will display items in a menu format on the Velocity screen. When one of the menu elements is selected by the user, the corresponding attribute is sent to the process to move forward in the application. The Message element has three different message types. First is the error message. It defaults to red and will look for the word error in the message. This gives the appearance that the message is quite important and the user should take heed. Next is the warning message. 
it defaults to yellow and is a message the user should be aware of but may not stop the process from moving forward. Last is the information method. It defaults to blue and it is just a notification of something that's not going to affect the process at all. The message element is only available in the settings screen which configures a global theme. More about this and project themes when we listen to the project settings module later. Each element has its own default styles associated, as set by the Velocity Predictive Formatting Algorithm. We call this Element Predefined Styles. The configuration can be edited by an administrator globally or on a screen-by-screen -screen basis. There are common items that can be configured and these will be discussed here. Any element that has a unique configuration will be discussed in the modules for setting menu options which covers themes and other global items and the screen menu option that covers a screen by screen configuration. The font family specifies which font to use for the element. When this value is set all elements of the same type are subject to the same font style. They are Sharif, Sans Sharif, and Monospace. The font size specifies the size of the element's font text. This can be adjusted from 10 to 20 points. The default value is dependent on the element type selected. The font color specifies the color of the visual text for the element. This is the font color only and does not pertain to the background color of the element. The font background color specifies the background color of this element. Be aware that if there is not any contrast to the font color, the text might not be readable to the user. Once the font family size and color is configured, you can also configure the style of the font. The bold option, selecting this option bolds the element text. The italics option, selecting this option italicizes the element text. And the underline option, selecting this option underlines the element text. By default, none of these options are selected, so they must be user configured. Again, these are configurable attributes that are common to all elements. Later, we will discuss unique attributes. The theory of key text is that you can create a screen template rule upon which reformatter changes are based. If other screens contain the selected key text, the screen is automatically reformatted to the style applied to the template screen. When a screen is added into the Velocity console, key text selections are automatically chosen for the screen using a predefined algorithm built into Velocity. In this example, outbound picking and scan task number and the cursor are selected by the key text algorithm. It is important to note the key text match is free form and does not discriminate on column and row. Therefore, it is important that when selecting key text that it is known that the order of the text on the screen matters. Outbound picking must appear first in the drop-down order, and scan task number must appear any time after. If this order is not followed, the screen is not selected for reconfiguration. The cursor position is also selected by default as key text. This functionality does discriminate on column and row of the cursor. This allows for a screen with multiple input fields to determine exactly what screen and input is being required. In the module Configure Screens, we will walk through adding and deleting key text on a screen. Thank you for listening to Formatting Rules, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity client. You are now ready to move on to the next module. Wavelink, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Landis Corporation, has offices around the world, so there will always be a convenient office near you. If you would like any more information, please contact your Wavelink sales representative or email us at the address sales at wavelink.com.